Hey everybody and welcome back to Star Sector. I've spent the past three years in between episodes 11 and 12 running around blowing up pirates and very, very slowly building up our planets. We have missed nothing of importance, pretty much I would just sit around orbit of Chris and slowly add buttons to the list. I respect your time way too much to make you sit through an entire episode of me going, uh, yeah, I think this time we'll build commerce. And then, yeah, I think this time we'll build heavy batteries. Because I want you to take a look at everything that's on screen here, and then I want you to see it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and so on and so forth. There's nothing really of interest that happened in that three hour span, uh, or three year span, it took about six hours real life to do it. We added two new colonies though, Cobalt, everyone recommended like quite a few times that I picked this place up. We actually scouted it and then I forgot about it in the previous episode. So we never colonized it, I went back and did that. And uh, it's it's pretty much just Chris 2, just less good. It's also got farming, it's also got commerce, it will soon have a Mesozoic Park, and it will eventually have a fourth industry of some kind. Um, every single colony was set up in the exact same way. We first upgraded to Megaport, then we built a Mesozoic Park just for the memes, because we are the Prat Ascendancy. We need to have the, the, the raptor scene every morning, it's part of the ritual. Um, then over here we have uh, built heavy batteries, these are ground defenses, makes it harder to invade us. We built orbital stations on every planet, and I'm upgrading them all to battle stations as well as the money comes in. Every planet got a way station, and some planets got patrol stations as well, this one's got high command, as Kalahari's always been our military hub. Um, this isn't the same system, so it doesn't need it. I built two centralization bureaus, one here in Sahara. Uh, and that's to give it a boost to its farming output. Right now you'll see the Bureau gives it three extra farming. And that's basically because this item right there, the Logistics Core, looks at the 12 surrounding light years around the Sahara system, which is this one. And if they are farming, sort of, uh, if they are farming colonies in that area, then it works. It, it adds an extra production and there are lots of farming colonies, so that's a good one. I've also, I've just been testing out how it works. I also... System info, I believe it was a Gobi, I think. Uh, I've done the wrong thing. Yes, a Gobi, I'm also building a centralization bureau because it'll get buffs to light industry and refining because a lot of that going on around the world. Then we built uh, Orbital Works, which is just heavy industry upgraded, and fuel production on two planets. We've got Orbital Works and fuel production here on Gibraltar. We've got uh, refining and domain tech archaeology here on Kana. That's the planet I'm around right now. Uh, it's named this because someone in the comments asked for it, and why not? Thanks for watching, really appreciate it. Refining because it's got no atmosphere, which means we can install that item. Domain archaeology because we need these things, domain era artifacts, in order to run uh, the stellar shades, which are currently around Nevada. These things right here, the stellar reflector rays. You need a domain artifact in order to run that. Doesn't make us any money, but I figured it might be handy elsewhere. This one's all getting ground defenses. Nothing very interesting, like I pointed out. Juno, the big, uh, big gas giant. Now at level 3, it's uh, got heavy industry, it's got a variable manufacturing, making supplies and fuel, and it's also got some mining, of course. We do actually have another one of those things, plasma dynamos, so I might want to colonize another one of these planets, just because this is stupid profitable. Uh, and we, I think we're currently the biggest producer in the sector. Yes, we are, at 11%. We've got the largest market share. If we can get another gas giant going, we could, we could, we could double that really crush the competition, make them dependent on us. But anyway, all of that is very boring and not why I'm here. I want to show you what is going on at Kana because we've also done two other things. First, we upgrade... Oh, I actually need to go to Gibraltar. We upgraded its ancient ruins to an ancient laboratory, right over there, looking great. And on one of the other planets, I can't remember which, yes, it was on Cobalt, we made a hull deconstructor as well, which is going to be cool. So basically what this does is uh, you stick a ship you want a forge blueprint of, along with an empty forge blueprint, into the hull deconstructor, and it will destroy the ship and create a blueprint for it. Then you need to find a planet that has the forge on it, upgrade the forge, and then you can make ships there. I think it's once off. I think it's a one off thing. Um, over here, these are all hull deconstructors. So we could just build the same thing again and again and again, but I didn't really see the point. Gibraltar's got an ancient laboratory. This allows us to install a degraded forge template, which I've got, uh, we found four of during our travels over here. We can stick that into uh, the laboratory and it should give us back a another forge template. But I, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to be like a functional one. Let's have a look. Let's stick it in there. This one's not functional. Confirm. When do we get it back? No forge temple is currently being repaired. Okay, well, let's give it a day. Let it let it tick over. 
Restoration of the Great Forge template has begun. Okay, let's have a look at you. You are... Oh, well, look at that. We get increased supply and fuel bonus. I didn't know that. 20 more days, and we'll gain an empty forge template at the end of it. Okay, so we don't even get, like, uh, a, a ship template out of it. So these are kind of useless, the ruins. They're not very helpful. Uh, one more day until we have ground defenses. I also slap dome cities on almost every single one of our settlements for the simple reason that it negates a ton of debuffs. Like, this one removes the effects of no atmosphere, but on Tanami here... Dome Cities removes the effects of Extreme Weather, Emical Biosphere, and Perpetual Dust Storms. All of which were added, uh, <laughs> well, the, the, the Biosphere was added by the Mesozoic Park, the Dust Storms are just here. It brought the Hazard Rating down by 75%, which is nothing to sniff at. Actually, I think it might be 100%. Yeah, because Extreme Weather is 25, that's 50, no, that's 25, and then that's 25. Okay, so yeah, 75% reduction, pretty impressive. This one's also an Ancient Lab, which is a bit of a shame. Now, there are a few other planets with ancient ruins we can colonize, but I think we've done enough colonization for today. I think what I want to do is start bullying the enemy. The purpose of the in-between time was to get us to the point where we can now begin campaigning against uh, other planets. And because a big part of it is this feature right here. We can go special functions and we can request a fleet. So we can say, I want you to invade... Uh, just for example now, I say I want you to invade Tortuga Station, owned by the pirates, right over there. Uh, it's got a 730 rating on space defenses and a 4540 rating on ground. That's a tough cookie to crack. So what we can say is I want you to take a crit fleet from my military world of Kalahari, and I want you to I want you to bake like a thousand strength worth of ships so we can defeat the orbital group and then i want you to take a, a, a ground strength force of like six thousand so we outnumber them significantly right let's say that's what we want to do that's going to cost seven hundred thousand credits to basically buy our way to conquering that colony now normally that would be prohibitive but if we oh there it just came through we're making 600k a month in fact that's actually kind of low this month because i think there's been some pirate activity uh which oh and i drew some stockpiles yeah okay that'll hurt but uh yeah there's i mean Every colony is now profitable except Sahara because that just got raided by uh, the Blade Breakers or something. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, Dome Cities do have a major disadvantage, which I would like to just point out, which is that they basically negate your ground defense strength. You go down to, you get a 0 0.05 multiplier, which means that you're running at 5% what you normally would. But they're worth so much money per month that I'm like, you know what, I'll take the L. Because this does give us a little boost. It's just, it's just super nerfed by that but oh well let's go ahead and give this a better battle station because this is a pretty critical structure we can't let this fall uh that's that's half a million per in fact i think i'm gonna do the same at kana this one's still building its station what's another critical place we can't lose probably you yeah i think judo juno's both got our volatiles and our heavy industry let's go ahead and upgrade that and we're broke again but as you can see we're making enough money per month that it doesn't really matter kind of crazy. Anyway, we need to go over to Tritachion and say thank you, but no thank you. Resign our commission and then start the wars. And actually, what better time to start a war than right now? Dival Avionics is doing an expedition to our Cobalt planet. I didn't notice that until right now. Uh, let's go make sure they regret doing so. Up into Cord. They'll be here in 17 days. Well, we're going to be camping for them. Oh, I should also mention that during some of the fighting, we picked up an extra Paragon. This was just from uh, a bounty that we did. Nothing too fancy. Same for the Astral. I can't remember if that was on camera or not. It's uh, it's all getting a bit blurry, but that was there. Uh, yeah, it's it's we're in a pretty good place right now, but we we got a little bit more. We got probably got to spend another I don't know three million credits. And then I'd say that the colonies are going to be as upgraded as they need to be to look after themselves. I don't want to have to constantly be coming back. And that basically means everybody needs a battle station. They're very expensive to run, but especially compared to the regular ones. But they are significantly more dangerous. Okay, their invasion fleet has arrived and it's like comically pathetic. What the hell is that? They have a single battle carrier. These guys look really cool. It's like a home world aesthetic. Um... And, like, four other ships, I flew all the way over here and sat there burning supplies for this? You're kidding me. You're kidding me. You know what? Get scrapped, nerds. Oh. Oh, I'm insulted. Also, we made 800 grand that month. That's, uh... I'd say we're learning. I'd say we're doing better.
Another thing we have to deal with now that our empire is becoming significantly more impressive is Ludic Cells. These guys are everything. I think I think the Ludic Path is probably the first faction we're going to go after because we don't have to, like, we're already at war with them. We don't have to make it any worse. And you don't really want to take out the pirates because we are selling a lot of drugs to them, right? And that's that's kind of paying for a lot of this. So I think what we need to do is go after some Ludic Path planets. Let's go ahead uh, and head back home. We're going to pick up like a million marines. I've been stockpiling them over the time over there. Are we paying for them right now out of interest? Do you pay for marines when they're not in your crew? No. Okay, cool. So if they're just chilling in storage, you don't pay for them? This is good to know. Uh, we can kind of guess, like, we can think of them as being sort of in the reserves, right? Maybe they're getting a little stipend, uh, not from my personal wallet anyway, which is nice. The Hara is chilling over there. Yeah, you can think of that maybe, maybe they're working like, you know, beat cop security kind of thing. Alright, looks like we got some uh, smugglers here and there, which are fle okay. These are the courier fleets. Yeah, we don't want to we don't want to fight them. Uh, I do occasionally need to blow up smugglers. Ah, perfect. I was just about to say because we want to disrupt the. Uh, we, oh my god, they all just got disrupted. That's fantastic. One of my patrol fleets must have taken out a smuggler. Um, I was like, because I was just about to say we need to take out smugglers so that we can disrupt the Ludic Path efforts. But uh, that's quite a bit of hands-on work. Otherwise, you can kind of just find their bases and blow them up that way. Oh, let's have a look at our new... Oh, look at our new station. Ooh, it's got like a big bulbous end. Nice, and that thing's, that's not even its final form. It can get even more ridiculous than that. Uh, because we can push this battle station up to a star fortress. Yeah, it just layers on a ton of armor and stuff. It's a real tough cookie to crack. It would basically mean that this planet becomes impossible to raid, which means we have like a baseline value. God knows why Chris is worth so much more. Gobi is now closing in in valuation, but Gobi's very fragile because it's currently got dome cities. We are going to want to do some terraforming to remove a lot of this. But uh, first I'm getting security done, and then we'll do vanity projects like that. That's definitely why we want that centralization bureau. Look at that additional production output. Metals, drugs, uh, just all of it. Everything you could possibly want. I think Gibraltar is also going to get another refinery in this slot right here. Uh, that is something to be aware of, is that we might actually end up having to shut down and destroy the ancient laboratory just to get a slot back. You only get this many slots. There are mods that let you, like, add multiple pages to this. I'm not too fussed about it. I think we'll I think we'll nerf ourselves a little bit. It's a little bit too much to manage as well. Oh, yeah, also I found some Phaetons out while exploring. They were just floating around there. That's a lot of extra fuel. Pretty helpful. Uh, why don't, since we're here, why don't we go ahead and assign a few AI cores to our, uh, to our guys. I'm going to hold shift... Left click three times, pick up three items. That's how you do that, by the way. And let's go ahead. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's do a little compare. What am I doing? I'm lost in the menus. Let's do a little comparison. So we'll get... Uh, obviously, I'm not going to use the alpha cores to pilot a bunch of ships. That's Those are entire colonies we could be running. And I want to see here... So this is effectively a level three pilot, the gamma core. The beta core is fearless. That's cool. Um, with a lot more stats, and then level 7. What does level 7 give you? It gives you shield modulation, field modulation rather, and it gives you damage control. Damage control is pretty good, but I think, I honestly, I think the betas are good enough. Let's, uh, let's install beta cores on all of our ships, all of our remnant ships rather, and that's going to significantly boost their combat capabilities. Those are a lot more dangerous now, let me tell you. Okay, nice, and I've just been sort of selling these survey datas and things to this market. 9% loss, but whatever. And all like the surplus blueprints and stuff. Let's just sell it to ourselves. That way we don't have to worry about the enemy using it. How clever, huh? 13,000 ship components. That would be only 100k, huh? Wow, surely someone's looking to buy those. Yep, but I think we'll just keep them for ourselves. I'm greedy like that. Where are those being demanded out of interest? Nowhere. Ah, uh, they're being demanded here. I see. I see. I think we want to want to build a variable manufactory on one of our planets. Maybe even no, no, Kana's Kana's got no atmosphere, so it is a good contender for for uh, orbital works for another another orbital works and some more fuel production actually. Also, I've been stockpiling supplies every month. I just put a few away. We've now got like six k backed up here. A lot of planets feeding into one place will do that. And eight thousand marines, eight thousand. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to. I think it might be time. Finally. Yep, it's, I think it's time that we order in some custom production. So let's do that. I think we're gonna we're gonna ask uh, ask our manufacturers. We can currently make 262k per month. I think we're gonna need a few troop transports, and I want them to have ground support. So let's see. 
which ones those would be. Okay, so I think the best solution right now, as insane as it sounds, but I, I genuinely think we order in a couple of Starliners. These will carry 3,000 Marines each, so we'll get three of them, right? We can do that in one month. And then we pick up a couple of these absolutely terrible Colossus Mark III's because they're cheap and uh, two of them will really improve our ground attack capabilities. So let's, let's send it, I think. Uh, I'm going to confirm that. And we just gotta wait a month. Oh, and uh, also, hold on. Hold on. Uh, production gathering point is Chris. Perfect. In system. Now we wait. Oh, and this is so cool. I was just hanging out in the bar. Uh, I chatted to a random person. And they gave us the history of our colony. This is so cool. So, so right here, 10 cycles ago, we bought our very first Hermes shuttle. This was the, uh, this was the second ship we ever had. And then, oh man, and now all the way up to here, three months ago, uh, we uh, maneuvered to disengage from a Blade Breaker large excision fleet. I mean, who knows what any of this, I, I, it doesn't record everything, obviously, but it is really interesting. So when did we found Chris? How long ago was that? Because Chris, Chris is significantly more established than our other colonies, right? There's Kelly Ananas. Where did we found Chris? There it is, eight cycles ago now. So we, we actually colonized barely two years after starting the game. That's really, really early. And I mean, I knew it was early when we started, but that's like really early. Let's have a quick look at our colony size um, metric. And it's just grown and grown and grown. We did plateau for quite a while. I think that was when we founded Chris, and that was when we founded the other two planets um, on, in the other system. And then it just sort of started growing. It hasn't really skyrocketed as quickly as you'd think it would be. But I mean, compared to colony size being 3, which is when we first founded it, now to a total of 48 across our different ones. And our level has kind of plateaued for a while. The fleet occasionally goes to zero, and that's that's whenever I just sort of... This was the, the time when I sort of sat in a... Just, I think this, oh, this is it, right here. I, 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 I just sat around Chris orbiting and earning money. Doing nothing else. Um, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> we had a fortune... We had an absolute fortune in credits at one point, and then I just started spending it. That was uh, that was at the peak of just sitting around Chris and uh, harvesting up money, and then just spending, spending, spending. And we do occasionally spike back up, as you can see, every month. And then spending, spending, spending. Oh, very cool. Oh, very cool. Okay. That's going to be... Uh... It's going to be fun to look back at at the end of the series, if it updates. If not, we can come back here. Maybe maybe the academic will be chatting to us again. Something else we are going to want to bring with us on our journey, not just the Marines, is also some heavy machinery. Uh, this is used to supplement your Marines' combat power and makes invasions significantly more promising. So what we're going to... I think where we're going to start here is we're going to look at planets. We're going to select inhabited, not necessarily unclaimed. And we're going to go after all the ones owned by the Ludic Path. So places like Cess here, so size 4, that should be fairly easy for us to smack. Uh, we've got Ludic Church, that's not that's not the same group, we don't want to fight them just yet. Ludic Path with Epiphany, we can take them out. Um, Tenacity, it's Chelsodon, oh Chelsodon's probably the biggest one, that's their home world, right? At size 7. Oh, and this is really encouraging, if we look at our Mercantile Convoy here, you'll see that there are no longer that many demods attached to it, and that's because we've got so many manufactories working with uh, with not great nano forges, but corrupted nano forges built into them. Really, really helps. Also, Patrol HQ is now working at Gibraltar. That's fantastic. That should just help keep down pirate activity in that sector. And there's our next installment. Good stuff. Okay, so who am I worried about getting invaded here? Juno's already upgrading. Kana, Kana I don't care about too much if they're disrupted. This is about to upgrade Kalahari. That's already upgraded to a battle station. I think Gobi. Yeah, we absolutely have to protect this planet. So let's push that one up to battle station tech as well. Oh, and you need you need ground defense batteries. You don't have those. Okay. We could build them now, but with the dome cities, it doesn't really do too much. I think we'd rather build the atmospheric processing stuff. Uh, can we build that now, or do I need to get that next time? I think I just just slightly overspent. Yeah, it's 400k. Okay, cool. So we can't get it now, but we can get it next month. Okay, that looks like that's our invasion fleet. Let's send it. Uh, we're going to take a final stack of another thousand supply. That looks good. And that means we can take 9,000 marines. That's going to be expensive. 
And we can take 4,000 heavy armaments. I think that'll cut the mustard. And plus 4,000 fuel just to do some saturation bombardments. I'm going to buy up the remaining fuel here. I'm going to buy up some more of these weapons. Buy up some more. Nope, don't need that. I'm going to buy up some more marines. Now let's freaking send it, man. You know what? Just max me out on crew while you're at it. Let's send it. To war! Ah, but first to Tritachion to resign our commission. They're not going to love it, but uh, we got like 100% uh, friendship with them. It'll take a while before they turn on us, no matter how many people we piss off. Oh, damn it. It's cheaper just to buy these things here. Oh, well, that's okay. Let's go to the comm directory. We're going to speak to the administrator, and we are going to resign our commission. There we go. We reduce it by 10, but everybody else actually likes us a little bit more. Mostly they're enemies. Um, and this is just sort of setting our relations back to a... A position closer to what they were before we started working as a mercenary, right? So we can just buy planets, like, straight up. Um, which is kind of incredible. And this only happens if you're really good friends with the planets. So we could just buy this planet for 800,000 credits, right? Uh, which is, I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy, right? Uh, we're not gonna do that just yet. But we could, uh, hold on, let's have a quick look. Are you, are you a candidate for that? Because you've got mining... And you've got decent volatiles, and we could install the thing here. Oh, and fuel production? Dude, hold on. Hold on. Yakchal over here could make us some real goddamn money. But of course, if we if we buy that, then uh, the Persian League um, is going to try and invade us constantly, because they technically lay claim to this location, and it's just going to be a nightmare. So what we're going to instead do is start off by finding a system somewhere around here. It's got nothing but either one faction we don't mind starting a war with, or a couple factions that are... Uh, like, there we go. There we go. The Lagan system is perfect. We've got Ludic Path and Pirates. We can take over all of that. Let's go start some trouble. And here's Hope. Oh, dude, we can take over that. I don't mind going to war with the Ludic Church either. If we can knock out this Epiphanies, the Ludic Path only, let's go do it. I'm not quite ready to go full AI yet. I think if we do, the entire sector is going to turn on us. So we're first going to... First, we're going to deal with the pirates. Everyone's going to think we're the good guys. And then suddenly... Oh, 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 boy. Oh, that one's going to go invade something. Thankfully, not me. Okay, let's start off with uh, Jetsum over here. This is a pirate faction. Open the comm directory. Freelance administrator, what can you do? Distributive economics is actually very good. Negative 10 upkeep. Uh, sorry, less 10% upkeep and plus 10% income. Is incredibly powerful. Why don't we slap that on Gobi? Um, I think he's going to make considerably... It's not much more money, but it does alleviate some pressure elsewhere. Which is pretty good. Yeah, distributive economics is pretty good. The boost to production is also very nice that I've got as a skill set. But we can also fire in administrators that do that. Uh, anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, let's invade Jetson. I think that's the next one. Uh, military options. We're going to have to engage the orbital station. I think we can handle this with our eyes closed. In fact, I'm just going to use the Odyssey and uh, some of the classics here. I will bring out this thing so that you guys can see it in action. This is going to be more than enough to handle that. Yep, yep. I don't, I don't think. I mean, this Odyssey can basically solo these uh, low-tech stations at this point. Uh, I'm also getting a little better at piloting it. That was an easy win. Uh, we could bombard it, but then we're going to have to, you know, you know, fight through. Like, we're going to have to, like, then deal with the damage to the bombardment. So I think it's easier just to proceed with the invasion as such. We have a lot of troops with uh, distributed weapons. What we can do is, of course, um, deploy more. But I don't think for this fight that that's necessary in the slightest. So we could... Uh we can merge. We can resize it. There we go. Oh, no. It's, okay. It looks like 33 is the largest we can currently handle. All right. Let's uh, let's start deploying people. Uh, you know what? Never mind. We're going to do the tactical bombardment. Uh, they, they have uh, ground cannons. I didn't notice that. Oh, Vengeance Fleet has been launched against us. That's fine. We'll just have to deal with it when it comes for us. And now we go back to the invasion. Uh... We go back to the invasion. Where is the invasion? There we go. Let's go ahead and deploy. Send the boys in. It's also a lot cheaper to send them in after you've bombarded. Okay. I think we'll just have to deal with the instability then. Let's deal with the heavy batteries first. Oh, heavy batteries even. Yeah, no wonder we were taking such fire. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna win that fight. All right, let's. Uh, I don't want to over deploy. Let's put. Let's just send. Uh, I think one troop to each one. After that, these squads are really well equipped, and they're not very veteran just yet, but they'll get there. All right, we have deployed too much for this turn. So we're probably going to be able to capture the salvage yards, the light industry, and the heavy batteries this turn, and then we can move around to the patrol HQ and the spaceport. Nice, we'd only lost a few guns, but we have already begun to win out over here, and let's go ahead and deploy some more troops to the various positions. So we need some men at the spaceport. I think they'll be able to handle that alone. Yeah, as long as this number's bigger than that one, you're winning. So then we just need to move some men from heavy batteries to salvage yards and light industry. Uh, leave. Okay, this one can move. Be out of movement points for this turn, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we'll have to just wait a day to move that. Or we could just spend the supply and move. You know. Oh, am I out of movement points as well? I'm out of movement points. Okay, cool. Now we just wait another day. It'll take a few before we all win. It's okay. We lost some marines on that one, but we have 7,000 more. Um, I think we'll be okay. So we are currently in a little bit of trouble at light industry and a little bit of trouble at salvage yards, but I think we can just move gentlemen from here to salvage yards. And you can go from here to light industry. There we go. That should deploy a little bit more around. Light industry is going to come back our way. And I'm actually going to move two more as well. The light industry. We'll leave one group there. And then I'll deploy one more. To, I'm out of, I'm out, I'm out of, uh, I'm out of movement points again. We get like three per turn. Okay, yeah, we need a, we need to get some ground operations, I think, as a skill point. Very nice. We have won the day. Okay, one more, one more turn and I think we've won that. And then Jetson was ours. Nice, market captured Jetsim. Now everybody likes us a little bit more because no one really likes the pirates. They're not going to like us forever, let me tell you. Okay, first things first, we're going to dump storage into here. This is great. We'll be moving all of this to the Chris planet. Uh, Jetsim is going to be suffering from several problems. Recent unrest, it's going to have rebellion, and it's going to have organized crime, right? This is not good. Uh, what we can do in order to try and mitigate some of the suffering here is yeah we're going to just be at zero stability no matter what we do right now in 40 days we'll get the station the heavy batteries and the patrol hq back that'll give back like five stability collectively which will help the recent address will go down by one point every three months so in a year and a half this will hit zero um and the rebellion is uh, what we is also difficult to deal with sorry I'm, I'm i'm stalling out here in my brain uh let's go and get, get kali may assigned here so that we don't suffer a stability bonus for being over over overworked and then something else we can do is speak to the station commander and we can help with the rebellion so i'm going to give them 100 heavy armaments and i'm going to give them 100 marines and that should just it should just help a little bit right it should just help a little bit because they're going to lose us money for a while but soon 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 it'll be another profitable part of the pratt ascendancy okay so looking at this colony again flotsam's got heavy batteries so unfortunately we are going to have to bombard it um we could do a... So there's two ways you can bombard in Star Sector. Tactical bombardment will knock out their military assets on the surface, thus enabling an invasion. Saturation bombardment is going to wipe out life from the surface of the planet, or in this case, the station. Saturation bombardment is a war crime. This is genocide. Uh, if you do this, every other faction in the game will hate you. And if you do it more than once, they will kill you. So just be warned that saturation bombardment is... We might have to get to it uh, as the CPU begins to catch fire. But uh, initially, it is it is very much not a great idea. I would I would advise um, doing the invasions. Now the invasions do come from the next Red mod. Just so you know, this is not in the base game. In the base game, Star Sector, you cannot take over other people's planets. As far as I'm aware, you can only wipe them clean and then colonize them again yourself. I don't. At least I don't think you can invade. I haven't played unmodded in so long. Um, but the invade flots and this 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 whole interface we're working with. This is from the next Red mod. This whole thing. Uh, it's it's actually quite well done. I think. So, yeah, no, resistance is a little less intense here. It's largest at the salvage yard, so we're going to have to do it there. I think we're going to start the fight there this time. Done. Lots of them is ours. 
So we're just going to take back our marines and our guns. And we'll send the rest of this back to Chris. This is kind of like, you can think of this like your spoils, right? You can just take that now if you want to. But uh, what we're going to do instead is a little bit simpler. We're just going to go to the local... Once we've called a night, once we've captured everything, we'll go to the local com relay. And uh, we will just organize the couriers to come here and do it for us. All right, so there's two more settlements in the system. We've got Cess and we've got Ligon. Uh, I do want to just make sure there are no more... No, unfortunately not. There are no officers there for us. How about at Ligon? Uh, is it Shepherd Metropolitan? Interesting. A freelance administrator. What can you do? Honestly, I'll take anything at this point. 15% accessibility, 25% larger fleets. You would be a very good candidate for our... For our fighter world, wouldn't you? Um, Kalahari. For our, this is our military planet. Yeah, you're currently being governed by a nobody. Why don't we give you to... Vigil Klein. Perfect. And Flotsam. You don't get governed by me. We'll give you to another nobody. There you go. Chak Rossi. Perfect. Oh, interesting. We're now producing... Uh, ship components from the salvage yards and this is actually a good system for that we might even leave one of these uh, I might even leave that planet intact Unless of course it's a mining planet in which case that thing is mine also We should really start attacking some of these small fleets um, Because they are going to absolutely wreck any merchant fleets we send here Yeah, I'm just gonna run around and smash these quickly because they are everywhere Okay, so the Ludic path has uh, sent an expedition fleet to Flotsam they're going to do a saturation bombardment, which means they're going to glass the surface of our station. We could actually allow this to happen, because that would remove the, the, the colony completely, but another, another group will just come and colonize it. So in fact, we're going to just, we're just going to sort it out. Um, well, we'll just protect it when it, when it, when it time comes. Uh, in, in due course, there will be too many attacks coming at the same time for us to handle on our own, and we will have to rely on some of the modded systems I've installed. Uh, which allow you to kind of... I don't even know what the right word is here. They allow you to to designate members of your fleet, like actual ships you're bringing with you, to uh, to protect certain areas. You can set them to, like, guard mode, basically. Um, but it is a bit... It can be a little bit iffy, the way it behaves. It's it's still very much just, you know, fan-made mod. Okay, I think next we'll leave Cess Station. I can't decide if I want to leave the Ludic Path here or the Pirates. I think I want to leave the... No, I'm not going to leave anybody here. This system's mine. Screw them all. We're taking out Cess. Cess belongs to me now. But let's have a look at the com directory. Um, sorry, Colony Inflow. That's what I want. So they've got aquaculture here, which is really interesting. That produces a lot of food. Uh, it has closed immigration. Nobody's allowed to come here. Interesting. Um, it has a full-blown military base, which we are going to make great use of. This is going to be a nice staging point. Once we stabilize it. Oh yeah, baby. This is... And we'll boost the, the station. And it's got a mega port. Okay, Cess. Cess is a colony I could do some work with. Let's get in there. Alright, first of course we're going to have to take out that station. But uh, we've done that a million times before. I will skip straight past it and see you guys once we're at the invasion stage. So Cess is actually fairly well defended. Um, I think I'm going to be taking out their aquaculture or their supply points. And then we'll also be going after the military base second. Then we'll worry about the ground batteries and things like that. I think we'll, again, you know, the classic strategy on this channel, defeat in detail. We, uh, we, we fight them where they're not. They have like no morale whatsoever. So we should be able to take the military base pretty easily. And the ground batteries too. So while that's the case, let's uh, try and... Secure that as well. Oh, that's looking a little tight though. It's fine. Okay, then the spaceport to the spaceport All right, looks like we have managed to capture the military base. We are Slowly picking away at them at the mega port, but they are actually holding out pretty well The Ludic Path fights to the last man. They are tough nuts to crack. I think we're gonna have to just double our presence They are really defending those fish man. Damn. They must be Avatar 2 fans. Like, we're gonna win, but they, they were kicking our asses for a second there. Boom! We now own Cess. It's a Cess pit, but it's our Cess pit. I'm also gonna dump all of this surplus supply over here, like all these extra weapons and stuff, because we can just courier this back to Chris uh, whenever suits. Uh, also, yeah, we don't have any supply anymore. That's a problem. What I wanted to do was go to this here. I think we want to raid Ligon. Uh, let's have a quick look at Ligon's... Ligon does not have a spaceport. 
uh, or rather a space station, which is pretty good. So instead of invading Ligon right now, we could just invade. We could just uh, raid them. Although maybe we just maybe we just invade them. Like who cares, right? And I think with this one, maybe it's worth. Oh, can I can I just like raid him for supplies? I'm flat out. We'll get 300. I don't think that's worth it. I think we just I think we just go in. Yeah, you guys go up there, sort that out, and then once that's one, and then I'm gonna move the ground defense guys over to the spaceport so they can take out the militia there to the spaceport. Now just cycle around the morale a bit. That should help. Okay. There's a Tritachion world over there. Let's go rob them of all their supplies. Yeah, and it looks like we're winning. And then the last thing, we just got to move mining back down to... Was it ground defense or the space? Uh, back down to patrol HQ, and we've won this. Okay, buy up all the supplies because uh, we are currently stalling out on the surface battle. Because what's happening is every time we move around, they're just putting more people down. So we clearly need someone occupying each location. So we need to deploy a, a group to spaceport. Oh, it must be within 250 units to do that. Okay, so in that case, ground defense, you move to spaceport. Okay, they're organizing resistance against us, you see. And patrol station, homies. You move to... Oh god, was it refining or mining? Refining. Ah, shit, they've unleashed the militia upon us. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, we're currently in control of everything. Let's just move the refining dudes over to the spaceport. And that should be the definitive blow. There we go. We captured it. Very nice. Okay, we are flat out of supply, and it's actually becoming a bit of a problem. We need to find a major settlement somewhere nearby that we can shop with. Um, I think it's going to have to be Gamlin, or maybe Aos Exodus. Yeah, there's a, there's a level 7 Ludic Church world there. Uh, we're going to have to buy some supplies from, because my fleet is flat out, and it's going to cost me a fortune to repair it as it is. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, we overextended very slightly. Okay, so we know that to take on four worlds, we're going to need about 4,000 supply. I think, I think a thousand supply per planned planet is the way to do this. That pirate vengeance fleet has found us. I'm just sort of harvesting... Uh, the, the system's being raided by pirates, and I'm, I'm sort of sitting on the edges and just vulturing all the supply. Uh, we need another 400 to fully repair. But this is the pirate attack fleet that was sent to take me out, and it is pretty considerable. Um, pretty considerable indeed. Oh, there we go. There's a faithful convoy. That should... There we go. They should get engaged. I'll pick up the Roy class. Perfect. Oh, look at that. 16 more supply? Dude, feed it into my veins. Buy another 100 here. Buy another 28 there. And I think we're going to be able to break even here. Oh, 247. Yes. Okay, cool. We're actually in surplus now. I just want to see how much uh, damage this station could do to that fleet before we have to engage it. In fact, how much more of uh, how much more Ludic Church stuff can we get this fleet to fight? Well, that means we don't have to fight that station when the time comes. At least not in the short term. Oh, we've actually got two separate uh, revenge fleets uh, pushing up against me here. This is incredible. Is there a bounty in this system? Because if there is, I might do it just for the money. No. No bounties in Aos Exodus. If there was, I would help you. But right now, you're on your own. Sorry, Ludic Church. Thanks for the supply. Okay, so now, as for what we do with these colonies, right now they're just losing us money, and that's actually fine. Uh, what we want to do as much as possible is rehabilitate them, right? So negative six stability definitely hurts. Uh, rebellion also definitely hurts. Uh, what we can do is go and drop off some stuff to sort of help quench that, but it's not going to do too much. We're going to have to just deal with this at zero percent stability for a while, I think. Uh, also, Ligon, you can go and you can be dealt with by someone less uh, qualified. Perfect. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be a tough one to get get around. That's for sure. All right, but I say at this point we head home, uh, pick up some more supplies, and then uh, restart the game. Cause man, the the frames have dropped to like we're in the seconds per frame range at this point. Oh, nice. And this planet actually has another industry. So rather than that, why don't we turn? Okay, so let's have a look here. What is the? We could build another industry. We could just upgrade the variable assembler and really just pump out some real goddamn money here. I think I'm gonna do that. Make this a variable manufactory. A veritable manufactory. Oh, and we actually have a point. Now we could do support doctrine. No, no, I need uh are there any more colony-based 
It's all fleet-wide, piloted ship. Fleet, fleet, fleet. None of this is for colonies. Only one colony skill. There used to be more. Ah, interesting. Uh, we could do fleet. Maximum number of officers, elite skills. I don't really want to spend the story points on that, though. Uh, we have some fleet-wide ones here. We have plus two officers. I don't really need that. Plus one level to the maximum level to the officers. And two more command points. And a maximum operative. Ooh. Interesting. We don't really have any operatives running. Maybe we should get some. We could get plus 2% weapon damage for all our ships. That's pretty powerful. We could just... Oh, we could just get better combat endurance for ourselves. That's actually... My combat ship does it... My capital ship does eventually degrade a bit. So that's... That's a big get. I think that's an easy choice. Okay, a lot of the marines and stuff has been brought back here. I've also dropped off some more heavy armaments in favor of more supplies. 4,000 should be plenty. Uh, we, of course, still have another 3k here. We're getting about... We're getting about 800 a month dropped off. And we can, of course, we can significantly improve that by... Building some more variable manufactories and having them shipped back to us. I don't really want to build anything in Lagan until the stability gets to about a 3 at the very least. Ah, uh, Cess is already up to 1. Okay. Okay. Yeah, as uh, the battle stations come back online, it's going to be <laughs> over a year before these two are back. Which would be nice, because they would give a lot of stability. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, and looks like this is all being disrupted by the rebellion here. Well, we could go back there and uh, drop off a little bit more off a little bit more, I don't know, help. If I could take it all free port, doesn't help. Doesn't help. Just makes it uh, lose some growth. Yeah, these, these colonies are going to be trash for a while, but they will eventually come around to uh, being a part of our way of life. But until then, I think we're going to call that an episode, guys. That was a pretty good one. We Let's just recap what we did. So I, I, I did all of this expansion off camera just because I respect your time and it would be quite boring just to sit there and watch me click buttons again and again and again. And again, we just did it a hundred times the same way again and again. So uh, that is a little bit of uh, efficiency is fun in that case. Then we flew over to the Lagan system after identifying it as a soft target and took ourselves four colonies. Hell yeah, my dude. I think the next big target we're going to push for is that I saw there were a couple of sort of pirate and Ludic Path primary planets around here. For example, uh, Epiphany is just Ludic Path only. There's Chelsean Ludic Path only, which is one of their sort of primary home worlds. There's also, there's another one around here somewhere, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Those will all be problems for the next time. I hope you've enjoyed watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Cheers. And of course, a huge thank you to our channel members and patrons for this month. Kelly Ananas, Call Me Bo 82 Old Man Tater, Frickin' Friendly Beaver, Knee Cruncher, Riley David, Badass Beast, Rivo, Charlie Weber, Mermix, Officer C4, Not K Arthur, Adachi Fanboy, Couch Potato, Rob, LCG Canyon Zahar, Jack Smallman, Cut Beef, Go Ham, I'm Alpha, The Senate, Richard Berry, Ragnar Skullcrew, Depoyo44, Eve Roxanne, Raija King, Mel Roman, Deep to Fry Sam, Jan the Pan, Jan the Pan, not sure about that one, and Pratham Parush. You guys all rock.